In my left ear, I wear four earrings. The four is symbolic of the four seasons, spring, winter, summer, and fall. The four directions, north, east, south, and west. Mr. T. Hello, love. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller, and this is Open Studio, my show where I help you gain more creative confidence and live a more artistic life. I'm an artist and instructor living in Sacramento, California. Together at my studio and on creative field trips, we'll explore inspiration, art supplies, techniques, and business secrets so that you can bring more joy and success into your creative practice. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how to stay motivated and follow through by honoring the four main phases of an art project. I like to think of these phases as the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And just like the seasons, we can't force creativity to happen before it's time. Society these days is deeply rooted in the hustle mindset of pushing through and getting back to the grind. Sometimes, yes, you have to discipline yourself, but for creativity to flourish in the best way possible, being present and allowing the cycle of art and productivity to happen naturally will give you a more rewarding experience and better results. This doesn't mean that it's easy. Let's be clear. It's like RuPaul says, girl, you better work. Being an artist can be a little hectic at times. There are a lot of hats to wear. One day I'm an accountant. Sometimes I'm a woo-woo, airy-fairy. Sometimes I'm a researcher. And sometimes I'm a marketer. So it helps to remind myself what stage of creativity I'm in so I can stay in the moment, respect the process as it unfolds, and avoid worrying about things that aren't relevant yet. Progress as an artist isn't linear, it's cyclical. There's a rhythm that takes place, and if we try and skip ahead, it won't necessarily save time because usually we wind up having to go back and put together the pieces we missed. This is why multitasking and hustling don't work. This is why the tortoise won the race. The gift of time and focus will have tremendous benefits when it comes to planning, follow-through, and results. So let's look at these stages more in depth. You might want to grab a pen and paper to take some notes. One, winter and dormancy. This is when you will gather your inspiration. The winter of an art project is a time when we might not look like we're doing anything at all, but on the contrary, there is a great deal going on inside. This is a time when we're an open vessel ready to catch any ideas that cross our path. To do this, it might be as simple as going out for a walk, going to an antique shop or a museum. And I talk about this concept more in my previous episode about artist dates, which I will link down below. Pinterest and the internet are also great places to find inspiration. So whether you're in the real world or online, this is a treasure hunt that can be a lot of fun. In this phase, as you look at other artists' work, remember that careers have seasons just as small projects do. Established artists had to come a long way to get to this point. So use other artists' work as inspiration and try not to get too jealous of their success because everyone faces difficulties and overcomes challenges. So stay the course, wait for your season, and you will grow. Two, spring planting. The next phase is learning and preparation. We are planting the seeds of our ideas. It's time to prepare everything you need in order to make your project. This is the logistical planning phase where you'll fill in any gaps in your understanding and materials. I recommend honing any skills that you want to practice during this time. This could be making a few little studies to nail down the composition or the colors in your final project. Do you need advice on which materials you need? Google it, look it up on YouTube, or ask at your local art store. Do you need to take a class? I can help you with online classes if you do, and I'll leave more information about that at the end of this video and down below. Write out a list and check it off so that you're ready to start the project with ease, because if you skip this step, you're going to have to go back and do it anyway. So hone your skills, practice any techniques you haven't tried, 
and gather your supplies to prepare for making quality artwork. And before we move on to the final two phases, if you're watching this on YouTube, here's a friendly reminder to subscribe to my channel, or better yet, come over to my website and get your free guide on how to become a successful artist. Like this video if you're finding this helpful, and then down below in the comments, let me know if you've ever wasted time on a project by trying to rush and how it worked out in the end. Okay, number three, summer growth. This one is all about making art. So you have your idea for a project, you know which techniques you'll use, your supplies are ready, and now it's time to sit down and get to the business of creating. In this phase, you'll need to focus solely on your craft and see it through. So just a few tips for this step are get rid of distractions, take plenty of breaks to care for your mind and body so that you don't get fatigued. This will also help with any negative thoughts that you're having about your progress. When we get up for a little while, we change our perspective and can come back and look at our work with fresh eyes. Chances are that when you look at it again, you won't notice every single little imperfection that you were so focused on when your face was six inches away from the canvas. Another one is to take a picture of your work in progress. This also changes your perspective and you'll be able to see if you're on track or if you need to fix anything. I also recommend to do the final touches after a good night's sleep. Our brains process information, we solidify it, and then file it away in our sleep. So you will literally be smarter in the morning. After the painting is done, make sure you sign it and paint the sides or whatever little details you usually forget to complete while your materials are still out. I used to be the worst at not signing my work. So don't leave it until later. It's a needling to-do list item and you have to discipline yourself like a pro to get it done. And last, clean up. Artists get a bad rap for being messy, but I always say that it's good to make a mess while you make art, but clean your mess up when you're done so that you can move on to the final step, which is number four, fall harvest. And this is about getting your art seen. This is when we reap the benefits of our hard work, yet it's so often forgotten by myself included. It will look different for everyone depending on where you're at, whether you're a hobbyist or professional, and where you want to take your career. So examples of getting your art seen that you might like to try are putting it up on your wall at your home or workplace and leave it out for a while and admire your efforts. Post pictures of it on social media you can list it for sale online on your website or on an online marketplace like Etsy or eBay or any of the multitudes of websites that host online sales. You can send an email to your followers and let them know about your new work. And you can apply for shows at galleries or other public spaces like coffee shops, boutiques, libraries, and other businesses and organizations. Art can change the world. It can be a butterfly effect that creates real change in the emotional constructs of individuals and society. So don't let your art waste away collecting dust in the back of your closet. Allow this cycle of creation to come full circle and let your art out into the world. You never know where it can take you. So I hope you enjoyed this holistic approach to creating and productivity. If you feel blocked in any of these areas, I do offer an online class called Creative Freedom, how to get out of your own way and make great art. It goes much more in depth into the emotional and physical blocks that we might have about being an artist and how to overcome them. I'll leave a link down below for that. And if you would like more information about one of the most important areas of making art, color mixing and color theory, you'll definitely want to check out my e-course, Color Quest, which I will tell you about right now. Art is magic. It reveals to us the emotions and beauty in our surroundings and within our souls. It can inspire and relax us, make us laugh and cry, and is worth a thousand words. Every artist wants to capture the essence of the scenes in our work, but when it comes to color mixing in your art, it might seem like something's missing. 
Maybe you seem to be running into muddy colors, or perhaps your paintings seem to lack dimension and end up feeling flat, or possibly you're not quite sure how to start or which paints to buy. The paint aisle at the art store is a big place, and there are so many choices which can be a little intimidating. If this sounds familiar, it's likely that you need more information and practice with color theory and mixing. And the good news is that I can help. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I've worked in the arts for over 20 years as a painter, teacher, a frame designer, and I've also worked in art supply sales and art galleries. What I've noticed from talking with artists, as well as in my own career, is that Things can get out of control pretty quickly when you don't know how to get the right colors. Some people think that they need to buy all of the colors because they're afraid to mix at all. And other artists try and save money, but the colors aren't very compatible and they end up wasting paint in the end. I had to learn and work on my practice to be able to mix the right colors and I've seen countless students be able to do the same thing even when they thought they couldn't do it in the beginning. In my online class, Color Quest, I share all of my secrets to color mixing. You'll learn how to pick the right paints from the art store, save money on paint that you can mix yourself, mix vibrant colors that you can use in all genres of work from abstract to landscapes and portraits, bring amazing light and shadow into your work, create beauty that will connect more with your audience and possibly lead to sales if that's what you want, and your painting sessions will be so much more fun because you'll be mixing colors that make more sense and that you'll be proud of. So stop guessing about color mixing and end the frustration. All you need is four tubes of paint, one brush, a palette, and some watercolor paper. The rest of the materials you probably already own. In this class, you'll get video lessons where we create studies covering the color wheel, complementary colors, analogous colors, earth tones, tinting, shading, the grayscale, hues, and how to pick your own unique palette for what you want to achieve. In the end, we make some abstract art to loosen up and play with everything you've learned. Anyone can take this class. You'll be able to follow along just like if you were right there with me looking over my shoulder as I talk you through every decision and move I make. Plus, as a bonus, you'll get access to the Keller Collective Facebook group, where you can stay engaged and get feedback. I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk at all. So come with me on a color quest, and I promise you breakthrough after breakthrough will get you on the course for mixing color and light with more joy and ease. I'll see you there.